Hi, Destiny family. It's really good to be with you all in this virtual reality. We're going to worship together and just invite the presence of God into our homes, wherever you are watching from. I believe that God is going to do a mighty work as we worship and we praise together. So joining us today, you guys remember Sharon? And of course, we have Bro Emmanuel on the keyboard. And AJ on the drums. We're ready to get praising and just worship God. Hallelujah. Because he's salt of the earth. Because we know that even in these times, it's so important for us to remember who we are in Christ. Amen. Are you ready to praise Him with us? Hallelujah. I'm so of the earth.
God, that we have you in our lives. That even at this time when we are just separated physically, that, Lord God, we have you as our ever-present help in time of trouble. That you are a God that we can cry to. That you are a God that we can run to. Your word says that your name is a strong tower and that the righteous, they run into it and they are safe. So Father, even as we worship today, separated by distance, separated physically, but we are united in spirit to worship you. Why don't we just worship him together in spirit and in truth. Father, we just exalt you today. We give you honor, thanks, and praise. We thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for your presence in our homes. We thank you for your presence in our families. Robo shaka tarabo siandarabasiye. Reke terebo shandarabasi ki andarabo shak. We worship you and we glorify you, our Father. We give you honor, thanks, and praise. You are so worthy, worthy of honor and worthy to receive all our adoration. Just worship wherever you are, worship him in spirit and in truth. Father, we exalt you, Father, we magnify your name. You are so worthy, you are so worthy, you are so worthy. We worship you, we glorify your name, Jesus. You are so worthy, you are so worthy, you are so worthy.
Hi family, this is Josh. Just want to encourage you all as we get together in times like this. Sure you agree with me, life has brought a different meaning to the way we do things every day. Almost every day we wake up not knowing exactly what measures are going to be imposed on us because of COVID-19 coronavirus. When it started, actually, before it became a pandemic, uh, you know, everybody sort of, you have hope within you that, you know, um, in a day or two, this thing is going to come to an end. You, you think in your, in your head that, you know, maybe in a few weeks' time it's going to come to an end. But here we are, friends, we are faced with a crisis. We are faced with a pandemic. My duty is just here to encourage you. I want to talk to us as human beings. I want to talk to you as a fellow brother. And uh, I get my directive from the word of God. Because the Bible says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but there is only one thing that shall remain. It is the word of God Almighty. So join with me right now as we start off. I want to talk about the power of two. Only because this COVID-19 fellow this animal, the beast that is in front of us, when it all began, you know, when it was being announced, these measures of safe isolation and quarantine, this and that, and, uh, and it went on to numbering us 500, uh, not more than 500 allowed to gather together places of worship, and then it went down to 100 inside a building, and it uh, said space apart, you know, social distancing, and uh, in our churches, and everything was changing so fast, and up until it uh, uh, came upon us, and we're told now that at a wedding, and imagine only five people are supposed to be there, including the marriage celebrant, and uh, funeral, a very emotional and touching time, 10 the only ones that are allowed to be there. And uh, it has left a lot of grief for all of us. And uh, we feel the negative effects of this COVID-19. And now we are where we are right now and we are told not more than two. You can't be more than two in number. And uh, we find ourselves lives are changing so fast because of this virus before us. So I thought I should come out out and begin to just give a word of encouragement to all of us because everything that you see in the natural it has its origin in the spirit world whatever you see in the natural it has its origin in the spirit world COVID-19 is not a surprise to God Almighty because its root systems are not what you see. Whatever we are seeing right now here and the vaccine that is not yet been found, I wanted to tell you that actually in the spirit world, the way God operates in his kingdom, there is a vaccine somewhere. We shall get it. So I want to encourage you that um, don't lose your hope. And I know that there are many already that have lost their loved ones and uh, the, 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 the promise of life is not even there because even there are more people that are, that are perishing right in front of us right now. But I just want to say for you that are still alive, for you that are still hearing me, I want you to be encouraged by this fact that um, let's fight this battle until we win. It's an issue really to do with two kingdoms. It's an issue to do with the two powers. The power of darkness versus the power of light. The kingdom of darkness versus the kingdom of light. It is the kingdom of the devil versus the kingdom of God. Uh, I'm privileged that I chose one because you can't save two masters. So in this time where COVID-19 has brought us to two at a time, whether you're working uh, as friends, two of you, or your husband and wife, two of you, you and your partner, two of you, you and your daughter, two of you, you and your son or your loved one, your cousin, whatever, two of you. I want to take this opportunity to make you aware and understand what I mean. Qualify for you so that you can understand what happens in the natural has already has its root systems in the spiritual. And this is how it works. You know, God is a God of numbers. The Bible is a, is a Bible that is full of numbers. And numbers in the Bible they mean something very, very powerful. One in the Bible talks about the oneness of God. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Behold, the Lord your God is one God. You shall serve him with all your heart, your mind, your spirit, and your soul. So we understand that God is one. That's a number. 
Two in the Bible has to do with unity. Three in the Bible deals with the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Your life, in fact, you are Trinity or tripartite. That means you have a, you, you are a spirit who lives in a body and you have got a mind. Three things. Four talks about the number of the earth, the four corners of the earth. And that's where we get north, south, east, and west. That's where we get our bearings from. Number five talks about grace. And number six, the number of men. I hear a lot of people asking me that, have we come to the end of the world because of this virus? Because we all know that it's called what we call the mark of the beast and shall be known because of the number. And his number is 666, six, six, or simply called the triple six. And I don't believe that coronavirus is really the end of the world, but I believe these are the beginning of the signs that are taking us to the end of the world. So please hear me and hear me well. Seven in the Bible deals with the perfection or completeness. And number eight in the Bible has to do with the new beginnings. But my concentration for this presentation, I want us to come back to what COVID-19 has done to us. It has now brought us to element two. So it is now law. You are not supposed to be three or four. You are supposed to be two. And I felt I want to give an encouragement to you because it's not over. I wanted to look at number two in a positive light. Why two? Because right from the beginning of creation, God in his illogistic nature, when he created, he created things in pairs. Here we go. Genesis 1 and verse 1. The Bible says God created the heavens and the earth. That's two. The Bible says he separated the day from the night. That's two. You keep on going, you find out that he talks about uh, that, that, that the heaven and the earth as two things and husband and wife that were created. Genesis 1 and verse 26, you find out the Bible says he created the male and female. And when he created male and female, so we know that the aspect of a husband and wife was created by God. Matthew 19 and verse 6. The latter part of that verse, it says, And whatsoever God has joined together, let no man separate. There is power in two. I will take you further. That is, you go through the scriptures, you'll find that John chapter 4, verse 28 up to 24 says, For God is a spirit and is looking for those that will worship him in spirit and truth. Spirit and truth is a pair that God has put together. Praise and worship is a pair that God put together. Prayer and fasting is a pair that God has put together. I can take you further because it's important that you understand that when COVID-19, what it meant for evil, by removing everyone else from you, I wanted to use it in a positive light. Maybe it's time you and I, God is wanting us to understand for you, spouses, husbands and wives. Maybe it's time you spend that meaningful time together without the cousins, without the relatives, without your co-workers. Now it's just the two of you alone in the house. Maybe it's time for you to be able to concentrate the dreams you have had together as husband and wife. The hopes you have always dreamed about when you were dating. The stuff that you always spoke about, about your children, about your future, about your destiny. Take these two as a number that we are finding ourselves and not as a negative that comes from COVID-19, but take it to the positive. I can take you further because you begin to realize that God is a God who creates things in pairs. Did you know the principle of seed time and harvest time? Those are pairs that God has put together. So whenever we look into our lives, we begin to realize that God is a God who has implemented things in pairs. We talk about Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19. God says, behold, I've led before you blessings and curses. What's happening there? The power of two. God says, I've laid before you life and death. The power of two. Don't despise the power of two. COVID-19 has brought you to a place where you think now everything is dwindling around me. My relationships are dwindling around me. But I want to take it in a positive way. That COVID-19, what you meant for evil. 
I'm going to make it for the good. I found myself when I woke up in the morning, something that I used not to do because the humdrum and the business of life of the first world. My daughter wakes up early in the morning, she goes to work. My wife wakes up in the morning, she goes to work. My son wakes up in the morning, goes to, to uni. And uh, it's like uh, everyone is very isolated. And we begin to have our own friendship out there. But COVID-19, you are teaching me something very, very powerful. I'm spending now meaningful time with my wife. I'm spending meaningful time even with my daughter. We go for walks, just the two of us, because that's the limit. That we can talk meaningful conversations. I can take out my son and we can be just two of us. Because that now meaningful. I believe what COVID-19 meant for evil. God wants you to see that the devil is always delayed in his plans. Watch this. It's not only in the elements and the things that I've given you that works in pairs. But are you aware that when you go in the Bible, pairs are there. Adam and Eve, they were a pair. You go through the Bible, Moses and Joshua, they were a pair. Joshua and Caleb. They were a pair. You go through the Bible. Let me go with you. You'll find out Ruth and Naomi. They were a pair. You go through the Bible. Esther and Mordecai. They were a pair. Pairs are meant to strengthen one another. Because Ecclesiastes chapter 4. The Bible says two are better than one at any given time. For when one is called, one can warm the other. Remember, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. I want to encourage you. Maybe it's time you rebuild your marriage again. You are looking at this in your marriage and you are saying, we have irreconcilable differences. But I believe COVID-19 is bringing you back to ground zero. Where you can talk to of you and say, hey. What is it all about? Meaningful conversation and you can rebuild your marriage again. I have seen marriages that were called beyond repair. But conversation between husband and wife, understanding of one another, communication that is meaningful. It brought those marriage again and they renewed their vows. And I'm here to say to you, you can win back your daughter again. I know she's estranged away. Maybe she did something that you have told to yourself. You will never forgive her or you never forgive your boy or the son to the father. I will never go back home. Maybe this is the time where we can say in the midst of this pandemic, let me rebuild my relationship again with my daughter. Let me rebuild my relationship again with my loved one because we realize that COVID-19 makes us to think deeper about what is meaningful about life. It's time to think. It's time to refocus. It's time to regroup. It's time to communicate. It's time to have meaningful conversations. As I end, I want to say this to you. I do not know what are the devastating effects I can just imagine. I visit as a spiritual authority some of my members that are sick, protected, but I've got God there believing that this virus should not come near my dwelling. God protect me. God protect God's people. And I want to take this opportunity to pray for you. To pray for your family. To pray for this two. The two-ness. The togetherness of just two of you. I do not know who, is, who you are two with. Maybe for some of you, it will be with your supervisor. Maybe you, you had fallen out in a relationship. Maybe it is with your friend you used to uh, play soccer or footy with. I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it is with your colleagues at work. But whatever the case may be, it's a time to refocus. It's a time to regroup. It's a time to think what life is all about. Because whether we like it or not, the end of this world, when it comes to an end, it brings us to a place of judgment. And on that judgment, God is going to operate again on the power of two. He says there will be sheep and there will be goats. The goats to the left and the sheep to the right. Make a decision right now. Why is to live your life? I want to introduce you to two most important factors that can follow you over your life. It is the words of David. David calls them. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff that comfort me. You anoint my head with oil. And my cup runs over. 
my favorite part. Goodness and mercy, the power of two, shall follow you all the days of your life. Take this. It's for free. Goodness and mercy. When you wake up in the morning, instead of inundating your brain and your mind with the news that are flooded everywhere over the TV, that there is another case there, many cases there, other cases there, that such information is enough to drain you, to steal life and to steal your joy. But I want you to learn to begin to speak. As I wake up this morning to go to work, to go whatever I'm doing, the chores out there, goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. Thank you so much. I want to encourage you and say stay tuned with us. Thank you for joining us once again for today. Please remember, you can follow us on YouTube, on Facebook, and Instagram. I know you have a lot of speakers that you are watching and following out there. But please, subscribe if you want to catch us right now. www.destinyempowered.org That's our, our website. And follow us on Instagram and follow us on Facebook as well. And I believe you'll be blessed as we continue to work together. My desire is to journey with you until COVID-19 gives up. Because according to the way God works, that virus is already defeated. You are a champion. May God bless you. First Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 20. The Bible says, For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which both belong to God. Communion. Whenever we partake of Holy Communion, I think it is important that we understand the significance and the meaning behind the bread and the cup. And uh, as we are facing right now Good Friday, is that time where we are rejoicing. Some call it the Passover. But the history of Passover, as you know, two million Jews, they are going to be delivered from their bondage after 430 years they've suffered under the Egyptian rule. And that night when they would leave, the Bible tells us that they were supposed to kill a lamb and they were to apply the blood of the lamb on their doorposts. That angel would come for that night and whoever had not put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost, death was inevitable. Ladies and gentlemen, it is important that for us, as we are partaking of these symbols, these emblems, we thank God for his protection. But you see, don't get it twisted because this blood we are talking about, ladies and gentlemen, it is the precious blood. That's why Paul says you are bought with a price or you are bought at a price. And that price was his own blood. It is not the blood that you and I know that was uh, filling the river Nile because of the babies that were being killed by Pharaoh at that time. That's not the blood I'm talking about. When you think about the blood, it is not the blood that we know when Solomon was sacrificing 120,000 sheep and 22,000 oxen sacrificing to his God. It was bloody everywhere at the port where he was. But that's not the blood that I'm talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not even the blood of babies that we know King Herod who was a brutal and a very desperate monarch of his time when he killed all those baby boys and Jerusalem was crying. The hall of Bethlehem was crying because of the blood of babies that was crying from the earth. That's not the blood that I'm talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not even the blood that we read of Genesis chapter 37 that we found on Joseph's court when they uh, took him into slavery and they took his coat and they dipped it in the blood of an animal. What blood am I talking about? Come with me to a garden. It's a garden of Gethsemane. Right there, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, he will go down the heavy spirit in his heart, but he will carry all the sins of mankind upon his body, just for you and for me. And we know that the journey is not going to get finished in the garden. It will take him through 
14 stations on his way to Golgotha, the place of the skull. 11 stations of those, we are told, he fell with that cross, going to die for you and I. But the job was finished when he cried out on the cross. It is finished. What was finished? The debt was paid. You and I would go free. But not only that. This blood covers you, protects you, and it can keep you. In these days we are living in, I would dare say to you, whenever you partake of the blood and partake of the bread, remember this. This is more powerful than the sanitizers of the world that we put on today. Whatever you put on today, the virus can come up again. We have to continue to apply that. But the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, it will never lose its power. I present before you the power of communion. He was marred this body like a broad field. As we take together, join me right now, remembering it is the power that is in the blood of Jesus. Shall we take together? We thank him for the blood. We thank him for what he did for us. When you drink this blood, it's no longer condemnation on you. You drink this blood for your victory, for your success, for your protection, for your comfort. Be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the power of the blood of Jesus Christ that uh, sets us free, makes us live our lives with hope, knowing very well Christ in us is the hope of glory. We are so glad that you could join us for this Sunday service. Now remember, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And stay connected to us via our website, destinyempowered.org.